In this topic, we're going to discuss the structure and function of phloem. So what is phloem and what is the structure of phloem? So we're going to look at the sieve tube elements and the companion cells. And then we're going to link the phloem structure to its function. So what is phloem? Well, this is the principal food collecting tissue in vascular plants. It carries organic material, for example, sugars and amino acids, from the leaves or storage organs to other parts of the plant. So it's actually a tissue made of sieve tube elements, as you can see on the left there, and the adjacent companion cells. You've also got parenchyma cells that act as packing tissue between other cells. So take a moment to have a look at the structure of phloem. Notice the difference between the sieve tube element on the left and the companion cell on the right. So sieve elements are elongated structures that are joined end to end to form long tubes. The cells are living and they retain a thin layer of cytoplasm within the cell surface membrane and this lies against the cellulose cell wall so we say that it's peripheral. Within the cytoplasm you can see mitochondria and a modified form of endoplasmic reticulum. However, they don't have nuclei. So they've got very few organelles and the nuclei and the other structures are broken down in order to make the sieve tubes more hollow and so reduce resistance to the flow of liquid in them. So they've got no ribosomes and no tonoplast. They do have phloem proteins though. The end walls, as you can see on the left there, are perforated by large pores. So these perforated end walls are called sieve plates. You can also see plasmodesmata between the sieve element and the companion cells. Now what do you notice that is different about the companion cell? Well, the companion cells are always associated with sieve elements and both come from the same cell division. So companion cells are actually modified parenchyma cells. Now if you notice, the sieve elements have lacked the structures, for example, nuclei, ribosomes and Golgi apparatus. So they are unable to carry out the metabolic processes essential for their survival. Now the companion cell are metabolically active because they've got these different organelles. So they've got a dense cytoplasm and a small vacuole, and they've got many organelles that assist with the metabolic activities. They've also got plasma desmata, as you can see, between the two cells that link the two types of cells. Now these two cells, the companion cell and the sieve element, are so closely related that if one dies, the other cell dies. So here you can see a beautiful image of the sieve element next to the companion cell. So notice how the dense cytoplasm is in the companion cell. And also have a look at the large number of mitochondria in the companion cell. Also note the cytoplasm is around the edge of the sieve tube member. So we say that it's peripheral. The center of the sieve tube member or the sieve tube element is not a vacuole. It's actually an empty lumen through which the cell sap moves. Sorry, the sap moves. So both these cells are connected by plasmodesmata. So here's another image of sieve tube elements. So you can see that they're elongated cells with perforated end walls. These are enlarged plasmodesmata and they form sieve plates. The nuclei have degenerated and the cytoplasm forms a thin peripheral layer. So the cytoplasm is actually continuous through the sieve plates. And notice how there's no vacuole. In this picture you can actually see the flow and parenchyma between the cells. It's 
actually quite difficult to see sieve plates and cross sections. So this is an electron micrograph showing the large pits. There is a substance called callose around the sieve plates. This may help block off channels when damage occurs. So if you were looking under a microscope, you would notice the xylem, which stains red in the middle there. And then you can identify the phloem. So look for large sieve tube members and then the smaller companion cells next door to them. Okay, let's have a look at how phloem structure is related to its function. So its function is to transport organic materials in solution. So the sieve tubes are elongated and they're arranged end to end to form a continuous column. The nucleus and many organelles are located in the companion cells so that the lumen of the sieve tube elements is more open and reduces the resistance to the flow of liquid. Sieve plates are perforated with sieve pores, so this reduces the resistance to liquid flow. Sieve plates hold the walls of the sieve tube elements together and prevent them from bursting. And the walls contain cellulose microfibrils that run around the cells, giving strength and preventing the tubes from bursting under pressure. The walls are thin to allow easy entry of water at the source, which helps to build up pressure. And the companion cells have many mitochondria to release ATP needed for the translocation of organic materials. And then finally, plasmodesmata allow easy movement of substances to and from companion cells. So in summary, we looked at what is phloem, what is the structure of phloem, so we looked at the sieve tube elements in the companion cells, and the differences between the two. And then we linked phloem structure to its function. And that concludes our lesson, the end.